Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Charisma, a Japanese movie from 1999 that was directed by Kiyoshi Kurosawa, one of my favorite directors. Part eco-thriller, part existential fail, Charisma explores a sinister natural world beyond any environmentalist dreams. Koji Yakusho stars as a disgraced detective who flees Tokyo following a hostage disaster. Seeking solitude in the depths of a remote forest, he is confronted by a gnarled, sinister tree that evokes both wonder and fear in its human visitors. Torn alternately between the forces seeking to protect the tree and those intent upon its destruction, Yakusho begins to lose his grip on reality. Can he redeem himself and restore the rules of the world before it's too late? So the key to enjoying this film, I think, is to recognize its two primary themes. You have individualism and false dichotomies. So the value of the individual human being is compared to the needs of society as a whole. And the false dichotomy is the illusion that one must choose between one or the other. So if you're not familiar with false dichotomies, they're basically created by having two different perspectives that are presented as the only options when in fact other options may be available. That's a false dichotomy. And Kiyoshi Kurosawa communicates these ideas through symbolism and character development in this film. So the main characters in this movie are the villagers who want to destroy the tree, this individual tree, because it's poisoning the surrounding ecosystem. And then you have this one guy who's like the tree's guardian, played by Hiroyuki Ikuchi, who wants to protect the tree at all costs from the other villagers. And then this is where Koji Yakusho's character comes into play. You know, he strolls into this village. It's like a forest uh, village. And he's basically like a swing vote of sorts because his status as a policeman gives him the power of authority. And this makes for a very interesting setup where the viewer learns about these, you know, odd villagers uh, just as the protagonist learns about them himself, so you're kind of along the ride with him. I think there's a healthy amount of thought-provoking content that can be mined out of this film. The character dynamics and how they interact really helps as well. Some characters might be intimidating at first, but then the power of a situation might shift away from them towards someone else who was seemingly powerless before. So it's, it's pretty interesting. I like Kiyoshi Kurosawa's directing style, of course, Lots of wide shots in this, longer takes, minimal editing. The environments are also beautiful and moody, and the chilly weather makes this film essential viewing during like the, the late autumn months, or perhaps early spring. Lots of leafless forests and dead trees around. I love watching this movie during this time of year. Kyoshi also has a real talent for finding decrepit locations and fantastic spots to stage a film. You know, there's an abandoned building in the middle of the forest that's pretty creepy. The plot describes it as an abandoned sanitarium. And I like the shot in this place when uh, Koji Yakusho's character is talking to the old woman, and they're sitting down by a big, like, uh, uh, window that no longer exists, and you can see, like, the water from the rain outside, like, dripping down. It's a pretty sweet, uh, pretty sweet shot. There's a lot of atmosphere in this film. The supporting cast has some recognizable faces. You have Hiroyuki Ikuchi, as I said, who after this film would go on to star in Ip Man and fight Donnie Yen in the finale of that film. Reno Sugi has a notable role in this. And you will recognize Yoriko Doguchi from some of Kiyoshi's other works, like Cure. Now one thing to keep in mind regarding this film it's deliberately paced stuff, all right? And it's kind of weird, if you couldn't tell already. You know, it's definitely in the art house realm of cinema. And to be honest, I could see, you know, a number of people not liking this. You know, so if you're in the mood for, like, a more briskly paced traditional narrative, this one might not be for you. This is far too, like, slow and odd for, a, like, a mainstream viewer of, of movies. Uh, but viewers with it, a, an attraction to like quirky, deliberately paced art house films that are a little creepy and, uh, and have a lot of symbolism in them, y you might enjoy this. You know, it certainly has more uniqueness, creativity, and imagination when compared to like the average film. So I, I definitely recommend it for that. 
It is actually one of my personal favorites from the last 20 or so years, and it's one of my favorites from this director. It's currently available actually on YouTube with English subtitles. You can also buy the DVD dirt cheap, I think, on Amazon and some other internet sites. And as always, I'll see you next time.